It's no secret. Black athletes dominate track and field sports at international tournaments. The fastest living man and woman on record are both of West African descent. And East African runners have consistently won middle and long distance running contests for the last 50 years. But a 2020 survey by Running USA found that only 4% of regular runners in the United States identified as black. So why the contradiction? To understand why only 4% of consistent runners in the U.S. identify as black, we have to run back in time to 1967. That year, University of Oregon track coach Bill Bowerman published Jogging. It quickly became a bestseller, and the popularity of jogging soared. He was speaking in this language of jogging. It's universal. It's free. It's easy. It's relaxing. All you have to do is go outside. Dr. Natalia Melman Petrozella is a historian and author of the upcoming book, Fit Nation, How Americans Embraced Exercise as the Government Abandoned It. It was very clear, not only from the pictures in his book, that who he presumed to be a runner was like probably a white guy and maybe his wife and maybe his kids. Now, I don't think he meant to be exclusive, but he's coming out of a particular culture in Oregon, which is very, very white. I do think it's important that to note that there were black people who always were joggers and always were runners. But by the 1980s, jogging became a sport associated with the white middle class. Images of black runners were rarely showcased in the media, outside of elite competitions, that is. So there is this kind of fundamental tension or paradox at the heart of this conversation which is at that elite level. On the world stage, most of these black runners who are taking home medals and, you know, attracting the world's attention are not from the United States. You know, a lot of white Americans, they are very comfortable sitting at home cheering on black athleticism on their TV set or in a game that they've paid to go see, but much less comfortable with, say, a black runner running through their neighborhood streets. The death of Ahmaud Arbery showed the world what black people can face when jogging. According to the 2020 Global Runner Survey, nearly 40% of black runners do not feel safe running in the U.S. I've had people point, you know, imaginary guns at me. I've had people kind of follow me slowly. I've had people throw bottles at me. I've had people, you know, ride alongside me to see where I'm going. Going outside in general as a black person is difficult. Sleeping as a black person is difficult. Going to the grocery store is difficult, and so I don't think running is any different. Black runners are taking the initiative and forming their own running groups. Spaces like Run Girl and the other crews and communities that are black-led and, and focused on creating space for black runners are so important because we need to feel seen, and we deserve to feel seen. You know, as black athletes, as black women, as black runners. When you see other people that you know, but especially other black people that you know when you're out on the course, when you're out running, wherever you are, just knowing that there's someone that you can relate to and that relates to who you are and your experience, there's nothing like that. According to the 2020 Global Runner Survey, three quarters of consistent black runners are seeking out diverse, inclusive spaces in running. In that moment, you catch each other's eye, you know, you give each other a little head nod, and there is just a camaraderie, there is a solidarity, there is an understanding. And if we can replicate that to the masses, I think we'll be in a really good place moving forward. Black people are running because we love it. <laughs> it's a beautiful sport. It's very rewarding for us. Please spread that message in your spaces when you see us. Support us. Clap for us when you see us out there in the streets. You know, that's what we love.